Okay, sorry about that. Let's uh, continue on here. So we're kind of getting ready to build into a scenario here that I wanted to make sure it's a clean video for. So um, specific behavior trait being investigated, how quickly an animal approaches a novel object. So we want to investigate this concept, this idea. So a novel, op novel in this case being new. So we have this creature is in its environment. It notices something is different. Never seen this before. Don't know what it is. This could be a human. It could be another animal. It could be a trap that we have set. Maybe we're trying to catch it live. Maybe we're trying to kill it. Um, or some, maybe it's a trap by another animal. You know, some animals do lay traps for others. Uh, spiders, for example. Uh, new food, it's a ball, just something. There's a new object here. How does the animal respond to this novel concept? So approaching novel objects can be dangerous, especially if it's a trap or if it's a predator. It can also be beneficial. It could be a new source of food or a different type of food and so forth. So um, for simplicity, the approach score will be the time from the moment that we notice that the object is first noticed by the animal to the time that it interacts with the object, that it actually goes over and touches it or does something to it. Okay, that's what we're talking about here. So in this particular example, we're looking at some ravens, and so these ravens are moving towards a novel object, um, and this novel object in this case that we see, we see over here, um, not exactly sure what that's supposed to be, it looks like it could be like a balloon or like a bottle, and so here we have a raven that moves quickly towards the novel object, takes 30 seconds, and it goes right to it. Here we have another that moves 60 seconds, and then we have another that moves very slowly towards it, a very cautious animal. So in order for natural selection to have an impact, there must be variation. There must be variation in why these, you know, these animals are doing here. So if, even though they all approach it, how quickly do they approach it? And so there is that little bit of variation there in their speed as they approach this object. Another thing that happens with variation is this can come from mutations. And mutations are any change in the genetic structure of the organisms. And it creates new variation in the population. Now there's a few ways that mutations can occur and we're again there's more specific ways I think that go beyond this it's been a while since I've gone into them but some very basic ones just to explain here is addition and deletion and the first picture here does a good job of illustrating that so addition is literally that when when a piece of DNA is cut and another genetic sequence gets inputted. It might be a very short sequence, it might be a very long sequence but another sequence of DNA gets randomly added into it or perhaps it gets cut and another piece gets, you know, and then a piece gets completely cut out. And so it's deleted, essentially. So this can change. And dependent, especially if you do this like in the middle of a gen, in the middle of a gene, it can have big effects on any proteins that it forms, anything like that. So the, the example they use here is that it typically causes an enzyme to no longer work. And enzymes are just a protein catalyst. So if the enzyme no longer works, it, it affected the protein. Base mutations, if you know enough about DNA, you know DNA is made of four bases, um, adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosine, if memory serves correctly. And the, if one of those bases just randomly gets um, replaced by another, then we have a mutation as well. And this can potentially affect the protein's function. So when the you know DNA gets transcribed into RNA and the RNA gets translated into uh, protein, that protein is not going to work properly because it's not the appropriate materials that are there. Another type of way we can get genetic variation is through genetic recombination. And this image, I think they're both the exact same. Um, well, one says 1%, one says 38%, but the image wise, they're pretty much the same. So regardless, so when you have chromosomes and they are, especially this, is, this happens a lot in meiosis as we're producing our sex gametes. Um, sperm or egg, depending on if you're male or female, respectively. Um, the two chromosome legs, for lack of a better term, can actually lay over top of one another. And when they do this, they actually replace each other. And you'll notice that they have tried to represent the genes here with the letters of the alphabet. And so they typically will replace the appropriate genes. So it's not like all of a sudden you're not going to have viable genetic material. And if you do, then it's probably going to be a miscarriage or something like that if that um, sperm or egg cell is the one that's successful in the reproduction. 
but it's when sexually reproducing organisms produce gametes, they can swap places, and this process is called crossing over. It's called crossing over, and this is a big thing for causing genetic um, variation as well. So some non-genetic things that can come from variation is when new genetic variants enter into a population via non-genetic pathways. Migration is a huge one, is the, probably the big one of these. Migration is where individuals that are of the same species but in a different location actually come into play in a new area. And as they come in, so you can see here these, I think these are wildebeest, I'm not entirely sure but they are crossing from one land spot to the other, and so maybe they're entering an area they've never been before, maybe, maybe not. It was a good enough picture for me to use for that, but migration that we have going on here. Another thing for natural selection to operate is we have to have fitness consequences. And again, fitness uh, refers to the effect of a trait on an individual's lifetime reproductive success. In our scenario, the two things that we're looking at is a slow approach versus a fast approach. Which one of those has more effect? For now, reproductive success basically means how many viably, reproductively viable organisms or offspring can an individual produce. So if you have lots of kids and those kids go on to have lots of kids, in theory, your genes are going to be pretty prolific. You're going to be very successful. You have a lot of fitness in that respect. So fitness does not mean body health or strength, that type of thing. Fitness here is referring to reproductive fitness, in which case you are passing on your genetic material a lot to the next generation. So if we have behavioral variation, but all variants have the same effect on reproductive success, then there's nothing for natural selection to select between. Natural selection has to select, and if they all have the same effect, then there is no selection. Remember, selection means, a, is, it's implied that selection means a preference for one over the other. Let's say we have a population of 100 birds. 50 of these birds have an approach score of 120 seconds. It takes them two minutes to approach a novel object. The other half of the birds, 50 birds, have scores of 30 seconds. They come in pretty quickly. Now, this may be to their benefit. Maybe the early bird gets the worm, as it were, or it may be to their, uh, their harm, that they get too close to something that's dangerous and they are taken out of the gene pool as a result of that. If all the birds produce an average of four offspring, there's no variation in fitness. Everybody's having four offspring. There's no preference for one over the other as far as natural selection has occurred. But if all the individuals with lower approach scores produced more eggs, then there would be an in difference in fitness. And this gets a little complicated, so let's look at this image to try to make sure we fully understand this concept. So here we have these ravens, and we have ravens that on the left, they produce three eggs. In the middle, they produce four, and in the right, they produce five. Now, the, let's say that the ravens that are reluctant to approach novel objects add fewer new food items to their diet. So they have relatively low reproductive success. You, know, you have to have the material in you to produce eggs. Perhaps the ravens that, have, that approach very quickly get a lot of food items, and so they're able to produce more eggs, five eggs. So if this case, because they're producing more eggs, they're obviously going to have more offspring. More of their offspring are gonna successfully grow up on average, and hopefully will go on to produce more. So these would actually be more successful in the grand scheme of things as a result of that. But without a mode of inheritance, any variability or fitness differences would just wash away from one generation. Natural selection cannot act. So for example, if 30 seconds approach have three eggs on average, and 120 seconds approach have five eggs, but there's no inheritance, the offspring would not resemble their parents. There's no variation in that case. So these are, I feel like we had these ideas down and I feel like we're almost overly complicating them at this point by talking about them so much. But basically what we're saying is that you have to have these three things in order for natural selection to actually goes, go into that. Narrow sense heritability is a calculation of the measure of the proportion of variance that's due to genetic variability, not due to diet or different learning behaviors. Okay. And there's a lot of math that we can get into, a lot of interpretation that we can get into. But again, I want this to be like a high school type animal behavior class. I don't want this to be too undergrad and graduate. And 
a lot of y'all might think, oh, I'm a major in biology. I don't have to do any math. Um, <laughs> you get far enough into biology, you're going to be doing a lot of statistics and things like that. But we're, we're going to get past that. I'm going to stop the video here because I'm getting kind of long here. And uh, we're actually going to get ready to get into a case study. So let's make that a separate video.